McNabb's Island, the green jewel of Halifax Harbor, located between city and ocean. Writer Thomas Riddell likened the island to a shrunken cork in the neck of a bottle, leaving passage for a stream of salt water on both sides. Across this busy saltwater highway, thousands of summer visitors flock to the island. They come to enjoy its natural beauty, history, hiking trails, anchorages, beautiful beaches, and wildlife. But the wind and water bring other unwanted visitors to the island shores. The Friends of McNabs began in the year 1990 and our goal was to preserve and protect McNabs and Lawler Islands as parkland. But one thing we noticed was that the place didn't really look much like a park because the beaches were littered with garbage. This was garbage that had accumulated for many years and it had washed up, gotten mixed up in the marin grass and in the, in the dune system. So our idea to try and make the islands look like a park started a year later in 1991 and we've been cleaning up the beaches ever since. This is my third year of coming to the island and it's a great day and uh, you get to give back to your community and you get some fresh air and exercise and enjoy nature. Yeah. So I really enjoy it. It's a great, great opportunity. And I didn't get them up. So we're basically going to divide up into groups. And uh, Carolyn I think we've got enough. and um, her group Valerie here has Carolyn's sign. So they're going to head that way. Volunteers pick up everything man-made except lumber, paper and other biodegradables. They separate pop cans and bottles for recycling, but some objects like large tires and lengths of rope are so firmly embedded in the sand they are impossible to move. We're on the Lighthouse Road on McNabb's Island, uh, Majors Beach this morning, and we're involved in a beach cleanup, our 23rd annual Friends of McNabb's Island Beach Cleanup. We've got about 250 volunteers on the island today, coming both from Halifax um, on the waterfront and from Eastern Passage on AM Charters. So uh, we've got a big group of people here today helping us clean up the island. Um, today we're focusing, this group is focusing on the Lighthouse Road, and it, it runs from the main road out to, towards the Lighthouse. Um, and we're picking up a lot, a lot of small things. And it's amazing how many locations are just clustered with bottle caps and small pieces of plastic and small pieces of rope. Um, other parts of the island, other beaches, other years, we've seen uh, a lot of fishing industry related materials like fish boxes and ropes and buoys and the list goes on and on. Uh, and a lot of debris that would come from pleasure boats and commercial shipping as well. Plastics, more and more plastic keeps washing ashore. These are things that don't deteriorate quickly. They can be out there for years. We found election signs that uh, were at least five years after an election. So these, these, this type of plastic garbage is, it doesn't really go away unless people uh, either don't throw it in the environment in the first place or they pick it up and we've been picking it up. On Majors Beach, where wave action can be severe, much of the trash that arrives with the tides is flushed out to sea again to inflict its presence elsewhere. But the more sheltered north end of the island, at Ives Cove, closest to the city, is where some of the worst accumulations of garbage collect. Thank you. 
Wreck Cove on the east side of the island is a popular anchorage for boaters and is another garbage hotspot. We're here today for the uh, annual beach cleanup. It's a great way for the community to come out and get a chance to see the island and also help keep our beaches clean, especially for students. It's really great to get that in their mindset that it's important to take care of our beaches. So most of the things that we pick up are on the beach, but we do get a fair amount up um, in the forest, especially closer to the beaches where the high tide will sweep it up. Um, and we mostly pick up tampon applicators, which we affectionately call beach whistles. These applicators are carelessly flushed down the toilet. We had hoped that we wouldn't be finding these anymore since Halifax has a new sewage treatment plant system but sadly we're still finding them on the beaches. Oh. This ain't even the start of it. That's the first one to load. I don't know how long it's going to be. Ooh, what is that? Not less the annual McNabb's Island Beach Cleanup is the largest and longest running beach cleanup in the Maritimes. Every year, volunteers gather between 400 and 500 bags of garbage and recyclables. Since 1991, they have filled more than 11,000 bags. Beach cleanups are expensive. Even with support from local business and community organizations, the cleanups cost the Friends of McNabs $2,500 every year. That's almost $5 for every bag of garbage collected. I really don't see any end in sight to the amount of garbage. There's still a lot of plastics. People are still being careless and throwing things out their car window that ends up in the, on the street and then in the harbor. So it's, uh, it's, it's rather sad, but there are still lots of people who are frustrated with this situation and who do want to make a change. We have a lot of youth that come out to our cleanups. Uh, organizations, there was a church group at this particular cleanup this year, we've had uh, businesses that want to help out, so I'm encouraged to see so many people willing to make McNabb's Island uh, a clean park. Every year we get more and more volunteers, people are really keen to help out. Uh, in fact, this past year we've had to turn people away because there's been just too many people wanting to help out and we don't have the resources to pay for additional boats.